So now let's talk a little bit about variables. And variables are important because essentially variables are the reason why we're creating easy screens in the first place. We are inputting data to a variable, we're processing that data, and then we're outputting the data to either a result register or in the case of creating a subprogram, we're actually outputting the data to the parameter box to output the necessary information that we need for a cycle call, or we can use this to calculate tool offsets, work offsets, anything that can be populated, we can do that by means of inputting variables, processing that, and then outputting the subsequent needed result. There's two different types of variables that you can define inside of the easy screens. There are variables with user input and output. And then there are variables that are called helper variables, which are just internal to the .com file. An external variable, one that receives or sends user values, is defined with a def statement. So inside of our main function, we define a variable with def. Next to that, we give the variable a name. In this case, in this example, I'm just saying def variable. We put an equal sign. And then inside of the parentheses, we give it a bunch of parameter input. The first is the type of variable that we want to assign. And if I go to the manual, we can see that our variable types that are available to us are real values, integer values, strings, characters, booleans, and variants. A real number is just a decimal number, 1.1, 2.2, 3.7, 9, whatever. An integer is a whole number, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. A string is just a group of characters, so if you wanted to use a string called probe, then you would define an S. You would tell it how many characters to allot for that string. And in the case of probe, it would be five. We would designate five areas of memory to store five letters called probe. A C is just a character, so it's just a single letter or number. A Boolean is just a true or false. And then a variant could just, it could pretty much be anything that it wants to be. We can see here that a variant type variable is determined by the data type of the last value assignment. It can be scanned using the isNum or ISSTR functions. The variant type is mainly suited to the purpose of writing either variable names or numerical values to the NC code. So it's kind of a morphing variable, if you will, whereas the others are explicit to their data type. As a little side note about variant type variables, I do like to point out that helper variables are of the variant type, which means that they can pretty much be anything you need them to be. So when you define them, you don't have to give them a data type. You just give them a definition. You give them a variable name. And then from that point on, they are just at your mercy to do whatever you want to do with them. We can see down here that the output string variable is assigned to, in double quotes, the workpiece directory, temporary workpiece directory, run.spf. So the output string variable is being populated with a file extension and an address. We can also see that the probe val variable here is being assigned to an integer value down here one or six based on the tool name dot val identifier property so we can query the tool name dot val which is the actual value of the variable that we're choosing up here and the two variable values that we have are probe or probe two which are again of string type with a maximum of 10 characters in the string the next field 
separated by slash is the limit or toggle field. In this def tool name, I have an S10, which is a string variable with a 10 letter designation maximum. Next to that, I have a star or an asterisk. And next to the asterisk, inside double quotes, I have the words probe, comma, and probe two. And what this is saying is define this tool name variable as a string, make it a toggle menu, and have the options probe and probe two available inside of the toggle. If we look at here, if I click on this, I can select either probe or probe two. So that's what this is doing here with the star. Inside of these variables above it, I have real number designations limited to five place decimal. If I wanted to put in a minimum and maximum limit, I would use that exact same area to separate with a slash and say minimum value of 0.1, maximum value of 20. If I save that and try to key in a value that's not within the limit of 0.1 and 20, it will say value not reached inside of here. If I say 0.125, it now accepts it. If I say 21, it'll give me an alarm down here as well. Next to that field is the default display data. If I wanted to display something other than a default of zero, I could put in a default of 12.5, save that. And we can see that the default data that comes up is 12.5. If I don't want any display at all, I could just leave it blank. And it'll just come up as a blank box. Next to that is the text section. And the text section is separated by commas. And inside the text section, we have long text, short text, graphic text, unit text, and tooltip. You'll see here in this variable definition that I have working diameter as my long text. I have nothing for my short text. I have work diameter as my graphic text because that's right next to the box. I have inch, which is my unit text, and then working diameter as my tooltip. So inside of here, if I hover over this box, you'll see that it says working diameter. These attributes are for input mode, access level, alignment of short text, font size, limits, and the response when dialog is open in terms of change block. The input modes are WR0, which is IO field invisible, short text is visible. WR1 is read only. WR2 is read and write. WR3 is a WR1 with a focus. So it's a read variable, but you can focus on it. WR4 means that all variable elements are invisible and no focus is possible. WR5 is the value entered is saved immediately on every keystroke in contrast to WR2 where it is only saved when the field is exited or return, enter, or input is pressed. WR2 is the default, so you don't actually have to put anything in, but I like using WR5 because instead of having to key in the value and then press enter, the value is immediately set as soon as I start keying that in. And then after the input mode, we have the access level that we can set up for each of these variables to be utilized. If you leave that field empty, it can always be written, but you can use AC0 through AC7 to set the protection level for each of the variables so that a condition has to be met in order for those variables to be written to. 
The alignment of short text, default setting AL0 is left justified. You can do AL1 right justified, AL2 centered. The font size, you're only allowed two different font sizes. You have the default font size, which is an eight point character height. And then you have the double font size, which is a 16 point character height, which makes the wording look really big. And it also limits the amount of characters you can fit inside of each of the text boxes by default. After that, you have your limit setting. The limit setting can be LI0, LI1, LI2, or LI3. And each of those has a different condition. LI0 is a no check. LI1 is a check with respect to minimum. LI2 is a check with respect to maximum. And LI3 is a check with respect to minimum and maximum. So essentially what that means, if we look at this example here, I have a def length input equals, I'm using a real number value with a five place decimal. I have a zero and a 999 minimum and maximum limit. And over here, I have WR5, which means that it takes the keystrokes in in real time. AC7 is just the access level. That's an optional. AL2, which is my alignment, and I'm doing a centered alignment. The font size, by default, is the eight-point character, so I don't have anything in there. And then the LI3 will check this variable based on the minimum and maximum limits that I have set here. If I only wanted to do either the minimum or the maximum, I can use LI1 or LI2. The next option is behavior when opening, and then CB attributes specified for a variable in the variables definition take priority over the CB default settings in the dialog definition. And what the CB is for, it's for change block attributes. So we have CB0 or CB1. Change block defined for this variable is edited when the dialog is opened where CB1 is the change block defined for this variable is then only processed if the value of the variable changes. So if there's a change in the variable, it will take in the change. I haven't really used this, but I'm sure there are times where this does come in as a helpful setting. The help display setting is a way to call up a different .png file to display a little help menu of sort in the dialog window. It will replace the graphic that we have as our startup graphic. The system or user variable setting allows us to access external variable data. So we can use user variables or system variables. The thing that makes this useful is that if you have an existing table of UGood variables or MGood variables or something like that, you can actually access the variable that you need directly in the software. So in this case here, I have a UGood file that I have set up for a whole bunch of different variable names. And if I wanted to access one of these variables, if I look at my UGood table, first number, second number, result number, we can see right here, if I go to calculator.com, what I'm doing in calculator.com is I'm actually utilizing first number, second number, and result number in the UGood variable table, as opposed to having these variables just being used as internal definitions. So when you define your variables, you can actually have them just internal to the .com file, or you can have them external to access a variable table. So if I show you that here, if I change this to five, change that to six and hit add, it takes the two values, it adds them together, it makes it 11. If I go into my UGood table, you can see that the values have changed, 5, 6, and 11. But now if I change this value here to 8, and I change this value to 17, and I go back to machine, you can see that the variables have updated inside the graphic. I hit add. I get 25, back to offset, and you can see that the result number variable has changed. The next fields that we look at are the position of short text, position of 
input and output field, and colors. You don't really need to have a position value for where the variables will fall in. There are default settings for where they pop up when you first define them. But if you want to move them around, it's good to be able to have that control. And you can see right here, under my def tool num, at the far end here, I'm positioning the short text and I'm positioning the dialogue. Same thing here, same thing here, and same thing here. If I go to my bottom up, you can see that I'm also positioning those here as well. If you don't want to move in one of the directions, you could just have an empty space separated by a comma because the first area is going to be your X position. The second area is going to be your Y position for each of the positional settings. So keep that in mind. And then the colors, we can change the background color of the input boxes and we can also change the color of the fonts. And there is a color table inside of the manual that shows you the values from one through 10 and what each color is represented by with those numbers. If you just leave that field blank, your boxes will be white and your text will be black. As far as integer variable types go, you have a lot of control over how your integers are handled inside of here. I just have standard I for integer input, but you can pretty much stack up the integers in different ways for different data types. So we can have the first letter as I, which is a basic integer designation. Then we can put in a display format. We can put in memory utilization, and then we can add in a U for an unsigned value if we want to do it that way. So if we look at these tables, we could see that the first character would just be an I, the second character would be a B, D, or an H, the third character would be a B, W, D, B, U, W, U, or D, U. And that just gives us the ability to have binary notation, decimal notation signed, decimal notation unsigned, different memory allocations, 16-bit, 32-bit, 8-bit. So if I wanted to change mine to an integer value, 8-bit unsigned, I would change the I to IDBU. Or in the case of 16-bit, IDWU. So I could change that real quick in this angle head one, IDWU. Save it. You probably won't see any changes in the actual field because I'm using an integer value, say 215. Doesn't look any different than what I had before. If I try to do minus, you'll see that it comes up as an invalid character because I explicitly told it to use an unsigned value. Driving down deeper into the variable types is a rabbit hole all in itself. So I would definitely advise you to read through the manual a little bit if you want to dig deeper into the variable types and things like that because there's a lot of detailed information inside the manual, albeit not the clearest thing, but there's a lot in here that you can do with variables, data types, and so on and so forth.